So if we look at this high on Thursday at New York Open, what did I teach you about the wicks and the tails of candles? Okay, think about that for a moment. Pause your video before I say it. You didn't pause the video. <laughs> the wicks and the tails are usually the variance by broker. You can't lean heavily on the wicks and the tails when you're looking for entries. Now, when you're measuring ranges, when you're trying to get the total range from low to high, you want to incorporate the tails and the wicks. But for entry purposes and targets for actual trades, I focus on the bodies. Okay, so with that logic in mind, looking at this area right in here, we had relative equal highs in here. So we had buy side liquidity here. The market runs up and takes that there. You see that? It runs above these highs right there. When did that move start? Did it start here? No. Did it start here? No. It started right there. Why here? Well, look at all the run up here. It dropped down. That's just a retracement taking stops. Runs again, comes back down, reaccumulates at the order block, and then pumps it through to get to buy side liquidity. So look at all this congestion in here, all that consolidation right there. Did this go below here? No. So we have a low, and then we have another low here, but it doesn't violate this dealing range low. So it's inside of that range, but it starts to run to here from that level. So that's why I'm telling you this is the dealing range low. So if you're looking at price, you're focusing primarily on these particular levels. The highest up close, the lowest down close. Now in certain instances, you'll see that inside this area, it might be the lowest opening price. It's the lowest body. Okay, so a body is defined by the open or the close. So we're looking at the lowest of either the open or the close, and we're looking for the highest of either the highest close or the highest opening price. So with that in mind, I'm going to add the Fibonacci on there. Now this time I'm taking off that 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 level, and I'm only wanting to show the zero level, the one level, and the negative one level. Now what that's showing here is a measurement from this candle's highest body to lowest candle body here. And it projects that range down one deviation. So the standard deviation of one of this range. So all we're doing is getting a measured move from this candle's close and this candle's close and that same range projected from this candle's close down. That's what the math is doing with this indicator. All it's doing is allowing me to show without having to draw it out, this is the level that's projected as a downside objective, which notice also is below, this is that 30 level and this is that 20 level. In other words, this is 0 0.2 on that FIB and 0 0.3 on that FIB when we drew it from the daily chart and all those levels were removed and only the 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 level was still in the FIB. That's what these levels are here. When we drop down from this high at Thursday New York Open, we sell off and we go over the 0 0.3 level or which would be 30% of the range that I measured from that daily order block up to this high. So did I pick out the high randomly? Is it hindsight? No. I told you Thursday, New York Open tends to create 70% of the time the opposite end of the weekly range. Well, here's Thursday, here's New York Open, there's the high forming, and we're trading down here. What if you're not satisfied with just being able to call it down 30% of a retracement inside that range? What if you want to get really, really good at calling specific levels. Well, you have to incorporate the market structure here. Now, this is institutional market structure. Oh, didn't you just mention this ICT in your YouTube video? Yes, I did, I did. But I only teach it here. So 
when you're looking at market structure, you want to know how far a range can go. You have to have all the things I just gave you here, which were framed on institutional logic. Thursday, New York Open tends to create the high of the week in bullish market environments. When does it not happen? When you have a real excited high impact news event on Friday. If there's a lack of any kind of news on Friday, generally that you're going to have that Thursday influence that you see here. Now, what I marked up over here was the institutional logic with this dealing range here. So I use this low that leads to this high here. So that is your dealing range that you work with for projecting downside standard deviations of one. So this was one standard deviation going up to take the buy side liquidity out over here, but also forming the weekly high. Now we're going to take a huge quantum leap forward. If this is the high of the week and we take out this low, how far can we go down? Well, we can go down to 20% of the weekly range. We can go down to 30% of the weekly range, but if in case we get a little animated, where's it going? One standard deviation here calls for 1.20817. Now, mind you, this is Forex.com's data feed. So your live account, the low here is going to be slightly different because, again, as I taught with the wicks and the tails and the candles, your broker is allowed to have a little bit of fluff in there, and sometimes they won't give you the, the low. Sometimes it'll go a little bit lower than what I'm showing you in TradingView. That's okay. If you use 30 as your ideal, but standard deviation is just below it by a little bit, stick to the 30 and that'll be enough. Okay, plus spread. But what about this over here? If we extend that out in time from that level, boom. Now think, high of the week, intraday, retracement carried over into Friday. Where's it gonna go to? Right here. Oh, this is too much, Michael. This is this is hindsight lipstick. His stuff isn't going to work like this. Right. That's what you're thinking right now. <laughs> but there's a couple videos that you see me doing things like this.